today we are here to start creating an object that is not a normal object. I'm proudly part of EBBF since 2001 and as an EBBF member I would like today to explore you and to emphasize the role that uh, a book can have into spreading the most powerful ideas we've got. The idea of uh, making a contribution in creating a society in continuous progress. I think that the most special books in the world are those that are created with the spirit of service. With the spirit of service. What does it mean? With the genuine will to help the society, to help a group of people, or to help a huge group of people, a very small one or a large one, but to, to give a contribution. So this is the idea that today we explore how to reveal our full value with a book. My job today is um, to help entrepreneurs to write, publish and promote their books. Uh, only business books able to be useful to their readers. This is what I do every day. <laughs> Um, the idea of, is to help entrepreneurs, professionals, managers to, um, to draw the essence, the value and their expertise, their unique vision. Um, I've been working in marketing for almost 15 years before arriving to this uh, concept of book. So the idea is uh, a book is a great tool that we can use to express ourselves. Um, during the last five years, uh, with the method I developed, um, I helped 280 professionals and entrepreneurs in writing their book, in writing, launching, and uh, um, planning before their book in three languages, in Spanish, in Italian, and in English. The idea is that there is a method behind, because uh, Sometimes I happen to hear that um, when, when they tell you, ah, you wanna start, you wanna write a book. Yes, start writing, start writing, write. But that, that will be a secret diary, not a book, no? If we want to write a book, we should first stop and think and dedicate some, some time in, in the strategy of this book. That's what I would like to do with you today to work together in the strategy of your books in order to develop the right book for you. A book that it has got a, a real meaning for you to write. If we would like to, to grow in our business, in our activities, first of all, the number one re, um, rule is that we have to provide value. What does it mean to provide value? It means to share ideas, information, content that are valuable for our listener. So we all create content every day. A speech is a content. An email is content. The way we sell ourselves, it's content actually, no? The articles that maybe we write for our blogs are content, but like not all the content is the same. If we would like to build strong relationship with people, we have to provide value, to provide something that is very special for the listener. What does it mean to provide value? Providing value means that we have to be useful. We have to be useful. We need to help people in doing something. If we don't help people to do things, then we are useless and our communication is useless. So like if we would like to, to, to create a great relationship with our customers, with our stakeholders, with, our, with the people we work today, every day with, we need to provide value. We need to help them. Provide value means to help people to solve the problem, to understand something that before was not clear. We need to give tools, practical tools, we need to help people to enlarge their vision. We need to help to be concretely helpful. 
this is to provide value because we know we all know that people attention it's something that goes by no? it's very difficult to attract people attention and to keep it if we would like to create a strong relationship with people, we need to give them value. We need to be able to retain their attention. So the kind of contents we need to create, it's somewhere in the middle between what we would like to say, what we know, we know very well, our ideas, our stories, our, the things we would like to say, and what the people need to know. So it's no more time for the communicating, communicating, communicating. It's just listen, try to understand what people need to know and provide what can give them value. This is the kind of content we need to create. So the kind of book we need to create is that kind of content that people will not be able to find anywhere else because it's something very peculiar that we are able to give, to provide. There are three kinds of contents that we all should provide, should create. The first group are the basic, the basic con the contents are those that if we don't have those contents, we just do not exist. In today's life, we know how does it work. We know that if we need a plumber, people will look in Google plumber, plumber Milan, plumber Madrid. And if you're not there, sorry, you just do not exist. Same with YouTube. Hello. Same with everything, no? So this is the basic, the basic of content, the, the one that allows you to be found when searched. The second kind of content is the content to sell. And sell is a very ethical business, actually, because if we don't sell our businesses, we just do not exist. No? We are all in the, sale, in the business of selling ourselves, our ideas, our values, actually. No? It, it's the second kind of content. What does it mean to have a landing page, a tool to sell our ideas, our proposal, our offer? And then there is the third kind of content, the ones that only few are able to create. And as only few are able to create this, those contents, it means that they are the ones that instantly position you higher than the others because they are the valuable contents. The ability to write a proper book, it's not something that everybody has got the ability to be interviewed in a, a very important newspaper or something, it's not something that everybody has got. So those kind of contents are the ones that really position ourselves differently. And we should consider these three kind of contents in our content mix. Now, all over the world, uh, people are using books to, to, um, to promote their ideas, to distinguish their ideas from the others. And there are a few books that uh, have made the history, actually, of the books, no? And the, 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 they are the ones that are very useful, that provided such an high value to the readers that became love books, no? Those books that really change the life of people, the mentality of people. I do wish you all to write this kind of book because are the ones that really generate the gratitude of people. No? Start with the why, Simon Sinek. Well, how useful was that? No? Leading change. I've chosen some of some EBBF members. <laughs> Equality for women, prosperity for all. Actually, you know, when you're able to convince people of such a powerful message, you are a champion, really. You made something that is so beneficial for the world, no? Even Miracle Morning that promoted a special routine, so a new way to organize, to arrange your morning, it changed lives for so many people. So this is the, 
the wish I make you, no? To, to be able to write this kind of book. I think that there are at least 10 good reasons for you to become authors, for us to become authors. And the first one, it's because writing a book, how many of you already wrote a book? Is there anyone who already did it? Um, so you can tell me what's your opinion on this. My perception is that writing a book is such a transformational journey. Because be before writing, you have to think, you have to study, you have to make confrontation between ideas. And thinking about uh, who would you like to, to appear in the book? How would you like to promote yourself in the book? How would you like to position yourself in the book? What kind of ideas you need to put there? What kind of uh, uh, tools you will give? It's such a transformational journey because it obliges us to think who we are, to reconsider our thoughts, and to put in discussion the way we normally do things. It, you know, the best way to learn is to teach. The best way to learn is to teach, right? Isn't it? And before teaching, we have to study to restudy things that we normally maybe do in a normal way. We've been doing things for ages, always in the same way that we. So it's a great way to improve ourselves and our way to act. The second reason for us to write a book is that a book is such an important tool to share what we have learned. Um, it's some sort of legacy. If we've, got, you know, historically, if you, if you write an article, then the article is a magazine and the magazine goes in the rubbish. No, it's the natural uh, pattern <laughs> of a magazine, no? Of a newspaper, isn't it? But a book, who, will dare to put a book in the rubbish. Nobody, nobody. So we have to write books that have to, with ideas that will stay. Plus we can use the same sort of legacy for the people in our team, for the people, our stakeholder, to um, make sure they know us. Actually, it's such a great tool because it's an evergreen tool, which means once we put down our thoughts properly and we, we don't have to repeat them every time. They are there. We've done the job once and we will not have to repeat it every time. How good is that? No? The third reason is that if we would like to build a community of like bonded people around our ideas, around our values, we have to define who we are and who we are not. What we do and what we don't want to do. Somewhere, somehow we need to, to take distances from a way we don't want to be, no? And this way we will attract people that understand and share our values. So it's a great way to clarify things and to attract people with fix the same, which means like-minded customers, customers that will understand us better which are the best customers, because they will understand better what we think, who we are. Then it's a great way to train our staff. What I do when I get a new staff member, the first thing I do is to give the book and I say, look, here is the basic of who we are and how we think. Read it, come back when you've read it when you've done. Huh? So 
you are sure, because very often, I don't know about you, that you want to train people, but you don't have the right time to do it properly. And there are some missed pieces then, then you realize that you could have done better. So that the book helps you to fill in some gaps. <laughs> in practical terms, this is my welcome kit. So when I get a new staff member, I send them this box with uh, the book, a letter. Uh, in, the, in the letter, I welcome these people and I explain which are the rules of our organization. No? So what are the expectations? Uh, it's a way to welcome people. So this is a way we can use our book. Another point is that the book makes us stand out from our competitors and make sure that we are present where we need to be. We, where are the three places where we need to be? We need to be on Google, on YouTube, and on Amazon. These three places is where people look for suppliers, where people check our reputation, no? These are the three places where people look for. So we need to be there. And the book gives us the content to be there. And then another point is that a book is really the fastest way to achieve credibility. Because only the experts write book. And actually, we should only write books on topics where we are experts. No, it would be pointless to write a book on something we are, we, we are not competent on. So if you write a book, you are automatically considered the most expert in that field. And this is how you, you, you can change the way you, you look like from being a normal person to being an author, no? And this is really a different perception that people will have on you. Another point, a key one is that um, about negotiation. If uh, we've got a book in negotiation, we will be much stronger, not only in terms of money, but in terms of uh, explaining our full value we can explain why we do things. There is a, uh, there is a customer of mine whose um, the company name is SOP, Save Our Planet. And everything in their company is based on their mission. Their mission is to help challenge fighting the climate change. And every single detail of the company is aligned with their mission. No? So when they explain their vision, explain their mission, all the supplier really understand how they are and would like to jump in that, in that good cause. So it, it's so strong, no? It, it really changes the game because it, it helps you sharing the most noble part of ourselves. This is the thing. This is one of the, the, the reasons I love most. A book is a very valuable gift. Um, for those that already experienced this, I think that one of the most important part of writing a book is um, when we say thank you, when we, the dedication or the part where we say thank you. Uh, it's so good to mention people and to take the time to explaining how valuable they are to us and doing it written. Um, one of the most powerful action when we, we write, most meaningful action when we write a book is to list all the people that are important to us, all the people that are, we care in our life. It's family, it's friends, it's those partners that we, we really consider valuable. And to write a proper letter, to, 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 to say, I'm giving you this book and I'm, 
taking this chance to explaining what our relation means to me. This is one of the most beautiful actions that are, this is a consequence of the book, but it, it, mix, it makes it all much more important. The other thing is using in the relationship with customer, maybe um, we put the book in a big present and we, we put this, uh, this present in the relation with our customers to say thank you or at Christmas time. So we put the book in a bigger um, ritual to welcome new customer or to nourish the relation. And of course, the book is the Swiss Army knife of marketing, because this is the thing. Actually, thanks to a book, we can make so many things. It, it gives us uh, things to say. When you wrote a book, you solved this problem. <laughs> because you, you can put the book in the middle of, uh, you can dedicate to the book an event and you can organize uh, a very special moment for the people you work with, or you can use the book for press office. Like, thanks to, to having written a book, I've been interviewed by the main Italian newspaper. Otherwise, it would have been more difficult. So my ideas went there. Or it gives you the opportunity to communicate so much. Um, what I love, I'm sure you all know TED Talks. Chris from TED Talks said something that I think is very, very special. He says, TED Talks, it's about ideas worth spreading. It's not about giving a speech. It's about thinking of an idea and spreading it. And that is such an inspirational tool for so many people, for millions of people in the world, that is something that really uh, touches me. I, I love the talks, I watch so many of them, and I, I think that many other people do the same. No? So the book is uh, in a smaller level what a TED talk can be, but maybe it's a step to get there, no? because then we can candidate ourselves to be a speaker maybe, because we are much more credible when we, we do that. Okay, we talked about the many opportunities that are there for those who write a book. But what I would like to do with you is to really reflect together, to think what kind of book it makes sense for you to write and to work at that together. Um, because the key question is, where do you start when you when writing a book? I think that the most important thing to start is by the right questions. To write a great book, we need great questions. So today, I would like to do in, in a very smaller scale what I normally do for my customers in a larger scale. Huh? So we. We start somehow. We have to start from drawing the map of our book. We need to draw the map. Before start writing, we need to answer the right questions. This is the map of the key questions. Let's work on that. In our book, I suggest us to write five main topics. The first one, which is the most important one, is our soul, our vision, our ideas, our values, our passions, our stories, our why, our mistakes, our defects, and our anecdotes. Why? Because we need to put what makes us very special and different from the others. The, es essen the essence of us as human beings. So the first point is this, our human touch. Without our very special human touch, 
our book will be exactly the same of the others. The second point is our technical experience. So what I studied and what I know is the theory I learned. It's what I know because daily in my life, I've read articles, I've read newsletters, I, I've listened to news. It's what I've learned. Third is our practical know-how. Okay, I studied, but then I learned by doing. And maybe it's a bit different from what I studied in theory, no? It's the, the, real, the real life. <laughs> um, what I, I know because I, I did it. Four is our method, which is very important. Why should we write about our method? In the work life, people are, can be split in two categories. One are the very professional people. The others are the ones that try, try to do things. No? Very professional method people are those that have got a method. A method that they developed by studying, by doing, and using their soul, their vision, their ideas. A method is how you do things. And it is different from how the others do things. So our books should definitely talk about our method. And then five, which I read the most important one, actually, it's the knowledge of the reader. I have to know who this book is for, and I have to talk about his problem, the problems of the reader, the needs of the readers, his anxieties, his thoughts, but nobody likes to listen about us too much. People love to hear about themselves. So we have to talk to people about themselves, about what they need, their problems, how they feel. If we put these five topics, we will really unleash our full value. Okay, let's start with the powerful questions. Ready? Okay, first of all, big question. If we consider your book, all your value, a gift for the reader, a gift is appreciated if it's original, meaningful, personal. So who? is the person we would like to give this, this, this book to. Who is this gift for? We know that if we communicate to the old world, it will be a very weak communication. So we need to communicate to a small niche of people. We have to identify a small group of people who will generally benefit from our ideas and from our knowledge so that we can write a book that is more personal, more close to the needs of this niche of people. So who is your ideal reader? Who is this book for? We all have got two kinds of customers, no? The kind of customer that it's very difficult to work with. We never really understand each other. And the other group of people, which we, we, understand, we deeply understand each other. We, because we, maybe they are the right initial group. Our solutions are better for them. So try to draw the face of your ideal customer. Think about one person in particular that you know that is the typical ideal customer the one that you would like to find more like this person. I will put you some music in order to do the exercises. Have you got a person, a name, a face? Maybe you don't identify the ideal one, but one that is not too bad. Okay, we said that the content to create is in the middle between what we would like to say, we know, 
and what our potential customers are interested in. So we have to understand what are what, what is it that is interesting for them? How can we know what are they interested in? We have to rethink to our conversations. We have to think uh, when they get in touch for the first time, what do they ask us? What are their doubts? What are the problems? What do they complain about? What are their fears and doubts? They worry about some aspect of our collaboration, maybe. Which of their problems they expect us to solve? What is it in their mind, the problem? Because a, a useful book is built around the problem. And it helps people to solve a big problem a problem that really affects their lives, a problem that they, they feel it, that they are struggling with. So if I would like to create, to generate a book to solve the problem of a bad working environment, what is the problem that people have? I hate my office, I hate my boss, I hate working, I hate going there, no? So the, the book can be built about around this big problem, providing guidance, exercises, ideas on how they can solve this big problem. Actually, if we are able to write a book that solves the problem of one person, even one single person, we made something that is very valuable. But we have to understand deeply the problem What's behind that problem? Let's think about this person, our ideal reader, no? What are the hopes of this person? The dreams, the fears, the worries? These are the questions that normally nobody think about. And then they complain if nobody cares about their book. But actually the book has to be useful for someone because if each single reader finds it useful, will be driven to positively talk about the book and to spread the voice. And the, every person, every reader will be our advocate. If the book is only telling what we think, it's not enough. We have to put what we think in the right way to be digested. <laughs> by our idea reader. We have to know if we would like to sell the idea of the diversity as a great powerful tool for the human uh, improvement, we have to know what are the obstacles that we have to address in our text. Um, if you are not able to answer now to this question, this means that you should put in your agenda some uh, interviews with your ideal customers, your ideal readers. So tell me about what, what are your worries. Tell me more. Let's know better these people because the, they can only benefit our book if the book is taught about them, around them. So the idea is that we are able to answer this question. We think about the problem that we can solve. We think about our ideal reader, and then we identify the problem that our ideal reader dreams of solving. And then we keep this, we put it in our map. Another point is knowing what the reader has got in mind, what, can we give this person? Which are the three key elements that will really enrich this person? What are, what are the real gifts we are giving? It's a message, it's a, a tool, it's a, an eye-opening information, it's a, what is it? We will help this person to solve a problem we will teach how to solve the problem. Will we teach strategies to overcome the fear? 
will we, what are we giving these people? How can we unleash a great value? What is the big value that we are providing for them? Are we talking about tools? Information that they do not know? Eye-opening information? Will we guide them to solve a problem? What are we going to reveal that is that people will benefit? We need at least three, three things. Three useful things for the people. Give me what I need, not what you want to say. Another very important point is that we, we are not just writing books for people to read them and that's it. We would like people to take action. We would like them to do things. What, what should they do after reading our book? What should they do after reading our book? Maybe they could get in touch. Maybe they could take action, start a movement, change the way they do things. Uh, book a business consultation, go to the bonus area where they will leave us <laughs> the email address so that they will uh, end up getting in touch with us and maybe in the longer term become customer. Start a new routine, start a new way to do things. What is it that they should do? We need to put a call to action in the book, really. Ideal, we should suggest, recommend people to do things and to get in touch with us. So we need different kinds of call to action. No? One is engage with me, follow me, stay in touch, write me an email, call me, book a call with me. Let's, let's start a, a stronger relationship. The other one is take action, start doing things differently. Okay, so let's start Put in the first elements in your map, in the map of the strategy of your book. We can start writing who is going to read your book. What is going, what is your reader supposed to do after reading your book? And what are the benefits for your readers? We put the key elements in this one page so that we We've got one, the, only, the unique point of truth where we put the, all the key elements, five words, one sentence for each point. Yeah, you put... What is your message? What is it, that unique message that we would like to spread with the world? It's important. Let's put it this way. If you had to convey a single advice to your customer, what would it be? What would you recommend? What is it the message, the, the tip that we would like to give to the people? What is it? Is it, it's possible? Stop worrying. There's another way. Start a new life. Pay attention. Take care. Try this. Joy is the secret. Joy is the sick. <laughs> this can be a message. It's time for a change. Go beyond. What is it? What, what is it the message of our book? What is it the single, the key element, the key message? Normally, it takes more time. I, what I, I wanted you to, um, to feel is that writing a book is a journey. And that if we don't have the key questions, and the answer to the key questions, it won't be a super book. It will be just normal, just normal. Ah, I think we could do better than that, no? We could do better than that. I normally put in this pattern um, a, a group of questions, which is called uh, find the soul of your company. It's about identifying the why. No, the why you do things, the why you work, the why, what is, but like amongst the, the bigger why, there is a smaller why, which is why would you like to write a book? 
why what gives you the motivation what this gives you the right energy you know writing a book it, it's a it's a big it's a big journey you know? it's a big task so what gives you the energy and pushes you forward independently from the current situation who are you doing this for and why who do you want to help what motivates you to reach this goal what moves you why are you writing this book maybe you deeply feel that there is some injustice maybe you see things that you don't like and you know you could give your contribution to improve what is it that you would like to change why why are you doing this we need a strong why to overcome all the hard tasks that are there for the for writing a book another question of which idea or expertise would you be the ambassador of? Maybe you start a movement. You are the ambassador of a new way of doing things. The thing is, we need the right mindset. We need a strategical approach. The last, the last of the things we need is knowing how to write. We need the right ideas. We need a set of the right ideas. For writing, we can delegate. Thinking, no. We have to do the thinking. The most famous books in history were not written by the, the authors, but they spread their messages actually. Jesus didn't write the gospels. Socrates, Plato, Julius Caesar never wrote books. Buddha never wrote a single line. Marco Polo narrated Il Milione to a person, which, which is a scriba, that a scriba which was in the same jail with him. Winston Churchill dictated his book to his secretary. Marco Mix dictated his autobiography to a journalist. The thing is, writing is not the key element of a book. The message is, the right questions is, the vision is, the strategy is. That is very important that we own that. Because the reality is that for writing, we need a talent that not everybody has got. And actually, as the book has to be a pleasure to read, it's good that writing is done by someone who knows how to write properly. The thinking, no. The thinking, the message, the ideas, the strategy, the idea on how to launch the book, it has to be done by you. The PR activities, promoting it, the relation activities, it has to be done by you. Writing. Not necessarily. For writing a book, what we have to do is overcoming our fears. We all have got very bad fears that normally limit us. Apparently, like 81% of American people would like to write a book, but those who definitely, who at the end of the day, write a book are like 1%, maybe. Why? Because of fears. What are the fears that you, I'm sure you've got and I normally have got when I launch my books because it's normal, it's natural. I'm not good enough to do it. I don't have anything special to say. I'm going to repeat what the others already said. And if every, anything goes wrong, what will people think about me? And if there are mistakes in the book and if the quality of the book is not good enough, it takes too long to write a book. Oh, I don't want to write a book. It takes too long. It's too much work. And what if nobody buys it? What if nobody reads it? The truth is a book to promote your activity doesn't have to be sold, doesn't have to sell hundreds of copies to be successful. A lot of my customers actually didn't write many copies, but gave them for free to the key people who generated such a big return on investment that it's okay, it's okay. It depends on what is the main aim of your book. If the main aim of your book is become a real bestseller, then you have to write a book that is 
on to a bigger target. If you write to a niche, then it will never generate big uh, amount of book sold. But it's okay. It's okay if it can generate the transformation that you want. It can li link people to you and uh, make it shorter, the distance between I don't know you and yes, I would like to become your customer. Generate a strong relationship, a strong engagement. So think about what is the benefit that a, can, a book can bring you and then decide what is the team that you need to generate this kind of project, which is the strategy, the writing and the launch and the PR part. Okay, so it's a big project which has to be split and you need a team to do this, okay? Maybe there are people that already collaborate with you, people who, who, that you already know or someone else. But uh, uh, the thing is, if you would like to do it properly, it has to be done professionally, like any project in our life. So if you do it properly, everything will be okay. It will go properly and you will overcome any fear. Because the thing is, if you would like this book to generate authority, it has to be done properly. It has to be written properly. It has to be beautiful. No? It has to be beautiful. It's important. Like, senses are there to be used. We don't need just black and white typing. No? We need something that just watching it transmits you something special. It, it has to be a fascinating object. Uh, there is, um, someone said that there are three things that every person should do in life. Plant a tree, have a child, write a book. I think that uh, writing a book can give you a lot, can be an enriching experience, so I wish you to do that. The last question is when. And I'm saying when because the majority of people I know start, start. It's, the truth is a book is never finished because it's never perfect. So if we would like to have the perfect book, maybe it's better not to start because it's such, it's such a sacrifice, no? So the point is when, if I decide myself, within myself, that in one year time, I would like my book to be out, it's a point, no? It's something I decided. My final suggestion is this, choose when. Homeworks. First, you can, it's not a free, a proper copy of my book because in English I only translated a small part, but it's there if you want. Keep working on your book. If you would like to get in touch, know us better, I'm here.